please obeisances or glories to Srila Prabhupada or glories to Guru Maharaj uh, as Kartika month is coming to end. So Guru Maharaj will continue to enlighten us on the past tense of Lord Damodaram. Thank you so much. Good morning. We have uh, 16 parties, uh, devotees online. So shall I uh, share the screen, Good morning. Yes, bring the next verse. Thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. I'll turn it over to you, Krishna. 922. Did we do this one? Um, Guru Maharaj, we finished until 21st verse, Guru Maharaj. So today we'll do okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Krishna's to Griha Krite Krite Suhu Vagrayam Matari Prabhu Adriksin Arjun Puram Guyako Dhanadat Majo. Translation While Mother Yasoda was very busy with household affairs, the Supreme Lord Krishna observed twin trees known as Yamala Arjun which in a former millennium have been the demigod sons of Kubera. Next verse. Purva Narada Sapena Rikshatam Papito Madat Kavakuvaramani Griva Hitikayato Srivan Vito In their former birth, these two sons, known as Nalakubara and Mani Griva, were extremely opulent and fortunate. But because of pride and false prestige, they did not care about anyone. And thus, Narada Muni cursed them to become trees. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purports of the 10th canto, 9th chapter, Srimad Bhagavatam, entitled Mother Yasoda Binds. Lord Krishna. Om Gyantam Iram Dasya Gyana Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasman Shri Guru Vindamaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudra Vari Pacharine Girise Sasunyavadi Pasyatya Devisatarine Panchakopa to this chakripa sindhu, eva chak, titanam bhavane gyo vaishnave gyo namaho namaha. Jaisi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadar Har Shiva Sadi Gora Bhakta Vindam. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare. Hare Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare. Hmm. So after uh, Krishna was tied up, his mother had gone back to doing the chores, the cowherd boys had left. Krishna remembered that his pure devotee, Sri Narada Muni, had given him a little service to do. And that was to liberate these two demigods who were now in the form of trees, sitting in the courtyard of Nanda Maharaj. They were big very tall, very uh, uh, noticeable trees from a distance. They were very huge. And Krishna, remembering his devotee, uh, still tied to the grinding mortar, using his uh, transcendental strength, as a little baby, he ran full force with the grinding more attached to him. And he went between both trees, which were very close together. And the grinding mortar stuck, caught both trees on the side. And the trees kept crashing down. The sound was so tumultuous 
that many of the residents of Vrindavan thought it was an earthquake. Other was thinking a whole series of demons were attacking all at once. People were fearful, stunned, and confused. And then some of them came, some of the leading cowherd men came to the scene. Before they got there, Krishna performed a little bit of, of uh, service. Out of the trees immediately came two effulgent personalities, fully dressed in all of their opulence as demigods with crowns and various types of armor and just looking very effulgent. Um, falling at the feet of Lord Krishna, immediately they started to offer prayers to the Lord, beautiful prayers. The Lord was pleased by their prayers. The Lord didn't waste too much time. He blessed them. They actually got the benedictions of becoming devotees, and he returned them to their former situation in the spirit, in the, in the higher planets, in the heavenly planets, as two of the sons of Kuvera. And then, of course, now we hear about them, why they were locked or forced to accept tree bodies for 100 years because of pride and false prestige. We understand uh, uh, what is it? Shruti, Shmiti, Sh uh, what is it? That one is born with, in a good family, in a wealthy family, with good bodily features and with um, good amounts of intelligence. And this is all due to pious activities in previous lives. And sometimes that pious activity just continues to accumulate and one reaches the stage of becoming a resident of the heavenly realm to enjoy unlimited material opulences. We use the word enjoy in a very loose way because in the material world, as Krishna says, there is no enjoyment there appear to be some opulences of people. But one cannot enjoy something that is of opposite its nature. We are spiritual and that's material. We can only enjoy that which is, in, which is of our same nature, spiritual. It's like uh, two different animals from different types of animals cannot come together and uh, associate with each other. And usually the animals stay according to their nature or the, according to their uh, description. So in the same way, we are not material. We can use material things, but there's no sense, no sense in enjoying material things because material things are meant for the service of the Lord, that's all. People try to enjoy these things and they get a false sense of enjoyment because real enjoyment is on the spiritual platform in relationship to our nature as spiritual beings. And that means connecting with, spirit, connecting with individuals who are also on the spiritual platform. The real principle of enjoyment is relationships and the real relationship is Krishna and his devotees, or the solid relationship. So now, if one is born with some material opulences, the tendency is that they become somewhat uh, overwhelmed by these things and become a little bit proud. Proud of being born and having good parents proud and having a good material position, proud to have some bodily beauty or some learning, and proud because of having some wealth like that. And tendency is that once that pride 
flag develops, then, as is mentioned here, false prestige, a false sense of happiness develops, a false sense of identity comes about. They just think they're better than others, and sometimes they exploit others for their own sense gratification and use their positions of opulence to further uh, control and exploit others. So here it says they don't care for anyone. And then not caring for everyone, what is the situation? They were sporting with two young girls in the Mandakini River without any clothes on. They were intoxicated and they were splashing around like little kids and enjoying the association of uh, beautiful heavenly damsels. But Narada Muni just happened to come along the same route. And the girls immediately recognized the great saint and they immediately took precautions and covered their bodies. But these two uh, demigods being intoxicated by, by both liquor and false prestige did not react to Narada Muni's presence. And therefore Narada gave them a little mercy. He cursed them to take birth as trees. When they realized what had happened, they became a little bit sensible and realized they were in trouble now receiving a curse from a very powerful spiritual personality. They started to pray and ask for forgiveness. Of course, Narada forgave them because they were sincerely praying, but at the same time, he mentions that um, we can modify the curse, but we cannot rescind the curse. So what he did was he said, now you may exhibit your tree life in Vrindavan Dham. And at one point, Sri Krishna will liberate you from, the, from that body. So he gave him a blessing along with apparently a curse. And that means to see the Lord and actually became a, they became devotees of the Lord. And so back to the elements here, what is that, that false pride and prestige that comes by some kind of material success? Mm -hmm. um, whether we, whatever situation we are in, we should know it's by the grace of the Lord. Although we may uh, act and make an effort to improve our material situation and gain some perks from the material energy, such as wealth, position, or we may even uh, gain great learning. Still, as Krishna says, I am the ability in all living beings. Nothing can happen without my sanction. So only Krishna can sanction whatever you are, ultimately, even though you may try, just like Prabhupada would say, two people are both trying for riches. One is working very hard and it gets very little, and another one hardly works at all, and immediately they receive something great. So energy giving them the results of their activities. So one should never be proud of whatever one, what, the only pride one should have is that I've become, I have become fortunate enough to become a devotee of the Lord. And therefore I am connected with the Lord. Therefore I am proud of my relationship with the Supreme Lord because he is the best. I cannot get any better relationship than that. That is real pride. Krishna is the greatest. I'm connected with Krishna. That's called spiritual pride. And that's, that's accepted, should understand that uh, material pride simply relegates one to various types of offenses and then gradually is reduced in due course of time. So we hear about different types of pride that arise from different types of uh, successes and the most binding of all of the prides is the pride of wealth this was illustrated by this particular pastimes these demigods were so wealthy they were sons of Kuvera Kuvera is so wealthy that he the world as a poor brahmana and 
he's chasing after the goddess of fortune Lakshmi Devi, who has left the spiritual world um, to uh, come to the material world. Now the Lord is trying to retain, or reunite with his eternal consort, the goddess of fortune. So now he appears in a particular impoverished situation, trying to again reconnect with his eternal energy, internal energy. And um, he finally does. And then there is a, a plan for an, a very grand wedding. But being a poor Brahmin, he doesn't have the money. So he goes to Kuvera and asks for a loan. Krishna is asking for a loan. <laughs> and his Leela as Srinivas, his name was Srinivas in that particular Leela, a poor Brahmana. And finally, he, uh, you know, Kuvera agrees to give him a loan. And there's a grand wedding, and then eventually they return to the spiritual world. Now that uh, loan that Krishna got from Kuvera is what we know today as the Balaji Temple. So you see, that's probably one of the richest temples in all of India, where people give large amounts of wealth in different forms, either currency or jewelry or even land various types of gifts to Balaji. And it's all connected with that Leela of helping pa pay back the, the loan that Krishna owes to Kuvera. So it's a little bit of a Leela. So you see how, how rich Kuvera is. He can even lend money to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So these are two sons of that very rich demigod Kuvera. And uh, so there, uh, you know, and we even see that in the material world when one has a lot of material opulences, especially wealth, uh, they don't pretty much care about anything else just to enjoy their wealth or use their wealth to become more and more wealthy. And in fact, sometimes wealth works in such a way as the more you have, the more you want. It becomes an addiction. I, I have, a million dollars, I have to have five million. I have five million, I have to have 10 million. I have 10 million, I have to have 50 million. So it's like that. So this, this, this pride of wealth forces one to think in terms of I am successful. Successful for what? Uh, successful only in the sense that one has somehow achieved something temporary, but there's no success in temporary achievements because it is temporary. And it's also fraught to various types of misery. We have examples in today's society where people uh, engage in various types of gambling. And one of the forms of gambling is to put money on the lottery and so you put you go into a store and you get a you buy a ticket for a dollar or two and it has a number on it and if that number is the winning number then you win a large amount of money and there are many people who have won the lottery and but statistics have shown due, due to follow-up programs that many of these people have gone down in their life and they have become uh, in, involved in various types of sinful activities, became implicated in a lot of these sinful activities, created uh, enemies who were always trying to get their money in the, set, in, the in the guise of friends. Mm -hmm. So um, we see that if one is not destined to achieve something material and they get it anyway, what do they get? They get they get the opposite. In other words, the destiny in the material world is you get so much happiness and so much stress. What is that verse uh, from the Srimad Bhagavatam? Um, uh, Uh, maybe we can go to that verse. It's uh, the first canto. 
fifth chapter, verse number 18. One five eighteen. Narada Muni's instructions to Vyasa Day. And bring up the Sanskrit. It's a beautiful verse. One of the most important verses in the Bhagavatam. Tasyai Rohetu Pratite na Kovido. Nalabhite yad bhamatam pariyada talabhite dukhanavam anyasu kam kalena sarvata gambira ramhasa. Translation. Um, persons who are actually intelligent and philosophically inclined should endeavor only for that purposeful end, which is not attainable, even by wandering from the topmost plane of Brahmalaka down to the lowest planet, the Talaloka. Now here's the point we're making in the second half of the verse. As far as happiness derived from sense enjoyment is concerned, it can be obtained automatically in course of time. Just as in course of time we obtain miseries even though we do not desire them. So when one comes to the material world, their happiness and their distress is already allotted soon as they take birth. That is called their karma. They're allowed to get so much happiness. They're allowed to get so much distress due to their previous karma. Of course, they, can, they can't increase or decrease any of these, but they can get them in different forms. In other words, a person might think, well, I'm living in a very cold part of the world. So let me go into an area of the world where it's warm all year round and then I, will, I won't have to suffer so much from the cold. So they do that. And they're thinking now I have more happiness, but actually what will happen is that you can't increase your happiness simply by rearranging your material situation. All you do is you may get that happiness in a different form, and in the same way, when you can't avoid distress, you may also get that same distress in a different form. So you might be in a warm climate, and you're thinking, oh, I'm so better, and then you're riding your bicycle, and you get, and a car hits you, and you get knocked over, and you break your leg. So in other words, something will compensate for whatever you need to receive. That is material. Of course, when we take to Krishna consciousness, all these things change by the power of devotional service and one is not under the influence of their previous karma anymore. But here it's explained, happiness and distress come automatically without even trying for them. So one should not think I can increase my material happiness simply by arranging things in a different way. Well, it's, it's a false sense of, of life. Okay, so these demigods, um, they, had, they were using their material opulences in order for sense gratification, and then they got a reaction for that and had to be had to live within the trees for a hundred years or more. It's not a very nice existence to be stuck inside of a tree. Okay, so we'll stop there and we'll open it up for discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Thank you for narrating this past tense of uh, Nalakuvera and Manikriva. How, like, out of pride and false prestige, they did not care for anyone, and how they got cursed by Narada um, out of compassion to liberate uh, them uh, from this uh, you know, false prestige and uh, pride. Yeah, thank you so much. And I really like that point, Guru Maharaj, that. Uh, uh, one is born with the uh, material opulences, uh, but uh, 
uh, we have to use this material things to serve Krishna, but not uh, you know, for the enjoyment. So the real enjoyment is at spiritual level, like uh, being with devotees and Krishna. Thank you so much, Gurmash. Uh, uh, really helpful. Thank you. Krishna allows us mm, to, when we say use our material opulences for our existence in this material world, but if we use these things without Krishna consciousness, they become source of suffering. If we use them for Krishna, we can also find some pleasure in having these material things because for a devotee, the material things are opportunities for service. Then they may also bring about certain types of success to live comfortably having good amounts of material arrangements and that but they're not so much enthusiastic about living comfortably they're more or less interested in using their situation for the service of the lord so they're not attached to their good fortune material good fortune they're attached to krishna that's the point Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for all the valuable points. Hare Krishna. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, dear devotees, please go ahead and uh, um, uh, share your comments or questions. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Well, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, uh, uh, one important point that you made from the verse is that the happiness and the distress that you are destined to get, you're going to get it. It is, it is fixed. There is nothing you can do to change it. The form may change. Um, and I have a question related to that, Maharaj. So, uh, so the opulence also uh, that is predestined um, so if you think if somebody is thinking that i may change my job because i may get better pay i may change the country because the living conditions is better the material conditions is better but if it is not destined it may come in a different way but whatever is your allocated quota would that that's what you would get so yeah what's what's yeah. It, what's in what's in what's in proportion is happiness and distress just because you you better your material situation doesn't mean you can gain more happiness. That's the point. That's the point. The proportions are happiness and distress, not not the opulence we have or don't have. That's not that's not the point. The point is, as we mentioned persons that were winning the lottery, I mean, they would think there'd be so much more happiness in life, but actually they weren't destined to enjoy material happiness in that sense. So they got, they got something that apparently seemed to be uh, beneficial, but it turned into something else because that was their karma, that was their destiny. But for devotees, but none of, this doesn't apply for devotees. Because as soon as you engage in devotional service, your material happiness and distress are automatically decreasing. It doesn't apply for this. That verse is simply for the for the for the materialists. But Maharaj, devotees also uh, endeavor for better economic situations, uh, either in terms of money or house or, or country or city. So it is something that the devotees also aspire, uh, or shouldn't aspire, but, but it is there as well, the desire. Well, if, you, if, you, if, you, if Krishna allows it, then use it for Krishna service. Mm -hmm. But if you simply want to use it for furthering your material situation, then that you'll get a reaction for that, either good or bad or mixed. Thank you, Mahalaj. 
I have another question, Maharaj, about another Kuvera, but maybe I think after, as we go to the past times, it will come later on. I'll probably ask later on. It is. Um, okay. It is, yeah. yeah. Mara, thank we have you. One more question right now. Okay. Sri Devi, what is your question? Dear Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Prabhupada, all glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Um, this is a very instructive, uh, you know, verse as well as pastime. I think it's fraught with so many lessons for us. As you were speaking, I was thinking of our dear, my dear God brother, Janaki Nath Prabhu. And I was wondering whether Krishna purposefully increased his material distress so that he actually lets go completely of the material world and goes back to him. You know, that, um, that makes perfect sense, seeing the situation, yeah. That is very likely in this case. Because the tremendous, tremendous suffering on the material plane actually, I think, put Janaki Nath on the transcendental plane because he just took complete shelter of Guru and Krishna. Well, Krishna will do that. Sometimes a devotee has so many good qualities engaged in devotional service, but they still have some material attachments. So in order to bring them to a pure state, Krishna will arrange something to destroy their material attachments. That's special mercy. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying. Hare Krishna. Hare And I did get around to transcribing. I'll send it to you a little later, Guru Maharaj, after this seminar, which is coming up now. Maybe in the night, send it across. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Is it all right to ask one question on this topic, Guru Maharaj, about the distress caused in the material world? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Guru Maharaj, about the distress caused in this material world, do you think that if suppose something we are trying to do and we are finding too many obstacles coming in our way and does it mean there is a Krishna's indication not to proceed on that particular uh, work or task? It could, it could mean. That's one possibility. Mm -hmm. The other possibility is maybe you're just endeavoring in the wrong way. Mm. That will retire oh, yeah. to that will require some intelligence, some introspection, and also maybe some advice from others who are aware of the situation. Mm. Because sometimes you know we do find ourselves in a but generally, that's uh, that's the way it works. Sometimes Krishna frustrates your attempt because he sees you're wasting time or it's not necessary. A lot of times he lets you go on with it and get the results, and then you realize the results is not what you were looking for. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good way to reflect once you start seeing that. So we shouldn't waste our time in that particular task and do something else, isn't it? That means it's not worth it. And, well, until you're actually sure, yeah. Guess my advice would 
in these situations, advice is very much needed mm. from others. This is my situation. This is what's happening. What do you think? Thank you. Yeah, Thank that you. Helps. Hare Krishna. Whoa. You're very tired, Guru Maharaj. You need to rest. I don't have time to rest. I'm <laughs> on an airplane. I'll be flying in an airplane in a, in a, within the next 12 hours. I got, I'm just trying to get but, everything done before I leave. I'm is your plan to come to London or not? Um, not, not now, maybe in the, in the springtime. Okay. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Krishna. Hare Krishna Guru, Guru Maharaj, I have a question. Can I ask? Um, yeah. Uh, happiness and distress, they come without even trying for them. I think, yeah, you have answered this, but still, Guru Maharaj, can you please um, a yeah, little bit enlighten on this? Because um, distress, right? So, um, because uh, when we come to the devotional yeah, service, um, like your distress. Yeah, the, yeah the, when you come to devotional service, then you're happiness and distress that you were destined to receive will be lessened through the power of your devotional service. And after some time, when you have reached a certain level of bhakti, and all of the, all your material actions or reactions are gone, and you're simply situated in devotional service. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a process. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Even when you get initiated, Spiritual master takes your karma. He agrees to accept some of your karma, which are the reactions of happiness and distress that you're meant to get. And so you don't get them. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, so Gurmaj, I have this question always, like, you know, as we are in this material world, is it possible, like, you know, I mean, since we are in this material world, like to be completely free from the material, like uh, anxieties and distress. Uh, your voice, yeah, I can't hear you. You're not you're too far away from your mind. Oh, okay. Sorry, Gurmash. Is it better? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, since we are in this material world, right? So uh, we are very much influenced by this material energy. Is it possible to completely like, you know, detach ourselves from this material being in this material world? Yeah. Like, that's the whole process of body, yeah. Oh. If it's not possible, what are we doing then? <laughs> We're just wasting time. <laughs> yes, Even though we try, we still like see we are very much affected by the material energies. So, well, just you know, follow the process and continue. You expect when you go to school, do you expect to get your diploma when you enter into the first grade? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, good much. Yeah, so yeah. So. When you go for your music lessons, do you think you have achieved, you know, the level of Beethoven when you after your first lesson? <laughs> you know, you have to <laughs> devotional service is a constant cultivation of both the activities and the qualities. If you can't, if you can't follow the process of all you are, you're thinking about is the results, then, uh, you know, you're, you'll never make any advancement. You have to follow the process. The process is so nice. Mm -hmm. You don't even worry about the results. Just all you do is you're enjoying the process of serving Krishna. You're enjoying Krishna and enchanting is Krishna is so nice. Serving Krishna mm -hmm. is so nice. You're not even worried about what am I getting or what am I not getting. Yes. That that is devotional service. We have to become fixed in devotional service where we can start tasting the happiness of Krishna consciousness. When we're tasting that happiness, 
then we're not thinking, what am I getting or what am I not getting? I'm getting the happiness of being connected to Krishna. Mm -hmm. That's that's the process. Don't worry about, well, if I do this, when I will I get this, I'm gonna get this, I get this. Yeah, it's nice to think like that, but then they, that's all down the line. It's not gonna happen right away. It's, we're gonna have to continue on the process and then purify the heart. Therefore, we, we talk about what is an artist. We have to get rid of those things that block our process of devotional service. Once we remove the things that we don't need or don't want, then the happiness of devotional service appears. It doesn't appear by creating it, and it's already there. It will manifest itself simply as we make advancement in devotional service. So simply engage in the process, that's all. Hear and chant the glories of the Lord, serve the Vaishnavas, you know, chant the holy names of the Lord, read Prabhupada's books. Process itself is joyful. Susukam kartam avyayam, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita. This process is joyful. Yes, Guru Maharaj. So continue to practice and do not be attached to results. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, get absorbed in the practice. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, thank you so much, Krishna. Mm -hmm. That's the key. Don't worry about what you're getting or not getting. Just serve, <laughs> chant, associate, take prasad, dance. <laughs> The process is there. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, Raj Prabhu has a question. Um, Raj Prabhu, you would like to go ahead? Yeah. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj, all glories. Please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Maharaj, all glories to the devotees assembled here. Maharaj, I have a question on trees. You mentioned in the passage how uh, uh, was it Manigriva Nalukuvara were cursed to become trees. And that made me remember chapter 15 of Krishna book, where it is mentioned that uh, some of the Krishna was sitting there and some of the trees were bent, the branches were bending right down to the floor. Uh, to pay their obeisances to him and it was mentioned in there that the trees or at least some of the trees were they had an impersonal view in their previous lives and they became trees there and now they were taking advantage of Krishna's personal association and darshan and uh, trying to pay their respects to him and it felt like they were impersonalists and now they get direct direct association and service of the Lord how wonderful is that uh, and then you think mate but impersonalist is not supposed to be a good thing or not the best thing uh, so I wonder if you could enlighten me on that. There's nothing wrong with being a personalist, but it's not the highest. Mm, okay. The absolute truth contains both personal and impersonal characteristics. There are those who practice devotional service to, in order to understand the... Uh, Impersonal aspect of the Lord. That's mentioned in the 12th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Klesha Dikutara Stesha Vavyakti Sam. Krishna speaks it. He says it's troublesome, but they may also achieve their goal after many, many lifetimes. You might, if you compare, compare the materialist to the impersonalist, the materialists are simply absorbed in trying to enjoy the material energy. But the impersonalists are trying to get out of the material energy, although they don't might have they don't have a clear understanding of the absolute truth. Well, 
But personalists or impersonalists, they're spelled, they're both spiritualists. That's the point. Or one is more complete. That's all. So many of many devotees who come to Krishna consciousness were impersonalists. And then as soon as they come in contact with the, the personal aspect of the Lord, they change. We have the example of the four Kumaras. They were impersonalists. Uh, as soon as they smelled the lotus feet of the Lord, which was covered by tulsi leaves and sandalwood paste, they gave up their impersonalism and became personalists. It's easier to go from impersonalism to, or more natural, you might say, to bhakti than it is for materialists. But the kind of impersonalists we try to, that who are really low, they're the Mayavadi impersonalists. Not all impersonalists are Mayavadis. The Madhivayas are envious of the Lord, and therefore they, they can't go beyond a certain level, and then they fall down anyway. Thank you, Maharaj. That makes it clearer for me, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, devotees, uh, any more questions, comments, or realization? Please share. Um. Guru Maharaj, I don't see any questions. It's um, okay. Um, so, Srimati. Yes, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. So um, I'm traveling tonight and I'll be traveling all through tomorrow. So the, I won't be able to give the class tomorrow, but I'll be back on Friday for the Harrisburg class. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. So uh, tomorrow we'll have to find uh, someone yes, who will be interested in giving the class. Sure, Guru Maharaj. And we, they can choose whatever topic they want. That's good. Match. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I just want to, sorry, good match. I just want to make yeah. an announcement um, to the devotees. Um, so tomorrow is Thursday, and uh, there will not be Iskon Harrisburg class by Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj is giving class on Friday uh, morning at uh, twelve p.m. UK time, uh, which is seven a.m. Eastern time. Um, please note that uh, class is on Friday. Thank you very much. Okay, and the verse is from the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Lila, chapter 1, verses 65 through 68. CC 65 through 68, the devotees want to read ahead of time for Friday. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mother Suda. We'll see you all soon on Friday, hopefully. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much for your valuable association. Okay. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Still Prabhupad ki jai for the Monday. Have safe travels, Guru Maharaj. Yes, Guru. Thank you. Please, mm -hmm. please bless Turkish Airlines that they are compassionate to this wayward traveler. <laughs> <laughs> sure, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> I promise next time I'll come to Dallas. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. You have to first uh, come directly to Dallas from wherever you are coming. Yeah, I won't even go to the east side. I'll come to the west side. <laughs> if you go east side, you're get tra getting trapped there, Guru Maharaj. You're not coming this That's side. what happened this time, yeah. <laughs> A little western western adventure next year. Sure.
Pierre Gunaj. We'll be waiting for you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna.